In September 2020, Facebook shut down 212 accounts, 42 pages, 9 groups, and 26 Instagram accounts linked to the Philippine military and police, and to China that supports President Rodrigo Duterte and the possible presidential bid of his daughter for coordinated inauthentic behavior, or in more familiar terms, fake news. In a country whose people spends the most time in social media in the world, Philippines has the best social climate for fake news to be cultivated and used. And as far as politicians are concerned, fake news work, and they work very well. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I will talk about the effects of fake news in the Philippine society. One thing that you need to understand about Filipinos is that we are avid social media users. According to a study by We Are Social and Hootsuite, this is the sixth year in a row that Philippines topped the world for time spent on social media with an average of four hours and 15 minutes each day. According to the 2018 Program for International Student Assessment Report, the Philippines scored the lowest in reading comprehension among 79 participating countries. Filipinos are smart, and most of us can speak two or more languages. However, we lack critical thinking and reading proficiency. Also, mix that to the business of fake news. Filipinos are fed daily with lies and propaganda, and it is a blockbuster hit. In the Philippines, we have a term we call troll farms, which is probably unique here. It refers to a group of people, sometimes working in real establishments, who are paid to create multiple fake accounts to spread false or misleading information <laughs> in social media. Politicians pay them for support. And uh, to basically bully people who go against them online. However, their main purpose is to make people believe that a false information is true just because many people are vouching for it. It is illegal, but they are backed up by government officials. Politicians often hire celebrities and influencers to do their dirty work. More interestingly, they tie up with marketing companies like Queen Mark Media Enterprises Incorporated which was banned by Facebook in 2019 to do the work in a more subtle way. Uh, the company would pay stars and influencers to share content from their website to increase engagement. Uh, because these people are already famous, thousands of people who already follow them would be led to these websites when they click on the celebrities' posts in Facebook exposing them to propaganda and false information. Um, one, other, one other detrimental effect of fake news in the Philippine society is extreme political polarization. Supporters of the current president have coined a derogatory term Dilawan or yellow cards. Yellow is the political color of the Liberal Party and symbol of the 1986 People Power Revolution a peaceful revolution that ousted the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos after 21 years in power. Online trolls and supporters, and even the president himself, would insult people who speak against him by calling them Dilawan or Yellow Card. In the past six years, the political divide in our society has never been bigger, fueled primarily by fake news. Also, political figures attempt historical revisionism by spreading fake news. One prominent example in rewriting history was of the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos. During his martial law, basic human rights were suspended and thousands of people were tortured and killed, with a lot of them never found again. He was ousted through a peaceful revolution in 1986. His bereaved family were proven many times to be beneficiaries of ill-gotten wealth, which the Filipino people are still paying until now through our taxes. They have 
always been good with propaganda. But this time, with fake news and social media in place, uh, the, the, the business of fake news has never been more utilized than ever. Sadly, a lot of people in social media are falling in their traps. People are buying the story that the martial law period were golden years, and that he couldn't have stolen billions of dollars of tax payer money because he was rich, having been paid 192,000 tons of coal by a pre-colonial family that never existed. Also, a lot of people believe that those who were killed and tortured were all communists, and it was okay because he was just disciplining the people. Fake news is very effective. The late dictator's son, Ferdinand Marcus Jr., is running for president in 2022, and he is leading the online polls. Lastly, one of the negative effects of fake news in the Philippine society is that it, 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 it incites hate speech. In the six years of the current president, Facebook's comment sections have become a war zone between the president's supporters and those who oppose him. Uh, Rodrigo Duterte is famous worldwide for his war on drugs. Having promised during his campaign to clear the country of drugs in three months, which never happened. According to Amnesty International, more than 7,000 people were killed between July 2016 and January 2017, and that the president is denying its citizens the right to life, as well as the right to eat the equality before the law and fair trial. Speak against the war on drugs and you will surely be barraged and flooded by hate speech by his supporters and online trolls. One example is our Miss Universe 2020 bet was flooded by hate speech in social media during the competition, causing her to break down emotionally. After disagreeing with the president's remark that women, that women are not fit to be president of the country. Another famous example is Maria Ressa, CEO of a digital news platform called Grapner, who has been bullied in social media for speaking openly against the administration. This year, she won the Nobel Peace Prize, the first Filipino to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no questions on it. Fake news works, and we are the daily victims of lies and propaganda. And this is, however, this is what is expected of, politi of politics and politicians. However, as tax-paying citizens, what should we do when the platforms that we rely on to communicate with family and connect with friends and the very channels by which we do so are the ways in which lies get to us? What should we do when the tax that we pay is being used to hire social engineers to sell propaganda to us? What should we do if the politicians that we view as heroes are not very heroic after all? Thank you so much for listening and have a good evening.